Is it spring already? It is if you want spring color bulbs. On this episode of Garden Time, we talk about planting your spring bulbs now for waves of early spring blooms. We tell you how to plant them and about some of the more unusual places where you can put them for a welcome spring surprise. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru in Salem, Oregon. At Portland Nursery, we believe that gardening is a creative endeavor that enriches our experience, enlivens the spaces around us, and provides a safe haven for the mind. Portland Nursery has everything you need to make your space feel unique, inviting, and exciting. From house plants and hedges to trees, tools, veggies, and herbs, our selection is always growing and changing, just like you. Come visit us today at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. Here at Capital Subaru, we are family. From you, our customers, our coworkers, and even our actual family members work here. This is my son, Casey. We're generations ahead of the competition, and we're always working to keep you and your family moving. We're here for you. We make it easy to join our Capital Subaru family. All the support you need, from sales and financing, to service and parts. We'll be here for you for generations to come. And generations after that. I'm Blake. And I'm Casey. We make it easy to join our Capital Subaru family. Where it's your, your way, way on, on the, the parkway. parkway. Welcome to the Garden Time Podcast. We're based in the Pacific Northwest of the United States in a Zone 8 region. This zone deals with plants that can survive in 10 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. I'm producer Jeff Gustin with your hosts Judy Alaruzzo and Ryan Seeley. Welcome to Garden Times Podcast. I'm Judy Alaruzzo with Ryan Seeley, and we're with Shelly today, and we're at Portland Nursery on Division, and we're talking about fall planting, but of spring bulbs. So Shelly, that's kind of like an oxymoron, so what does that all mean? <laughs> it is, except that bulbs are the perfect thing. You have to plan ahead, and then you get this like perfect little spring surprise. Um, so we have a lot of customers come in in the spring, and they're seeing crocus and tulips all over town. They're wishing, they're wanting them to be on supply then, but really they need to have come in months ahead of time um, to get their bulbs. So right now is the perfect time to come in. Um, bulbs need to sit in the ground for several months and get cold in order to do their pop in the oh. spring. So if you get them in now, you can get a wide variety of blooms just when you need it after all those long winter months. So, ah. well, so yeah. And we're in the Northwest. So if you're in a different part of the country, you might want to talk, about, uh, talk to your independent garden center or your master gardeners and find out when you should be planting or which one you should be planting and all of that. But we're mm -hmm. going to talk about the Portland, Oregon area. Yeah, in the Pacific Northwest, we kind of have the perfect climate for um, a wide variety of spring blooming bulbs. Um, we want to find spots where they're not sitting in boggy wetness all winter. But any place that's kind of um, pretty free draining, you can pop some bulbs in the ground. Or if you don't have a big yard, you can create a pot that will sit there and then it'll give you that surprise in the spring as well. Because there's lots of different places we can plant bulbs in the yard. I mean, there's- Yes, uh, there's everything from um, like, if you want center height in like a perennial bed, um, you can plant alliums that give you huge, big pom-poms of purple. Um, but if you also just want like a little border fluff, like a cute little daffodil that pops up um, first thing in the spring that gives you a little edge color, um, you can do that too. Tiny little irises to big irises, all kinds of stuff. So there's a wide range of blooms Ab and colors right. and heights. Absolutely, and yes. But there's, there's a little planning that we need to do there to, to kind of get to what we, what we want. Yes, so I would say if you're planting in your yard, um, you just want to think about planting depth for your bulbs. And then if you're planting a pot, we could talk about like you can do layers of different blooms within one pot. Then you could get like a staggered bloom where a decorative pot of flowers gives you color for several months versus just one little dash uh -huh. in the spring. And all that mm -hmm. information about height and planting depth, that's all on the packages, isn't it? Yes. Um, every package, I'll grab, I'm like, which one's my favorite? There's some <laughs> snow yeah, crocus, cute little buddies. Um, the back of every bulb package will have the ideal planting depth. Um, this one gives you a spacing in between, the depth you plant them, and then kind of the months you plant them in the ground, but we know that's kind of right now. Um, for crocus, I guess a good rule of thumb is like the smaller the bulb, the closer it is to the surface, really. So these yeah. crocus bulbs are tiny little itty bitty. They're like the size of a grape. Yep, about yeah. that. And we plant them about three inches down from the surface. Um, whereas a daffodil bulb, this is a really fancy 
This is called pom pom rose. Oh, it's, it's this new kind of like, I feel like there's a lot of really romantic looking daffodils these days that have these kind of peachy things. They're not those like bright electric yellow, yellow yeah, ones. Very, that very, you got very soft. Yeah, if yeah. you had the kind of a dreamy cottage garden idea, um, there's a million daffodils you could plant that would give you kind of this romantic feel instead of the bright kick. Right. Although I grow a lot of yellow daffodils. <laughs> but, um, so these daffodils, uh, these bulbs are maybe the size of a lime, um, and we go down about like six to eight inches to plant those. So every package will have um, the planting depth, but if you think about three to four times the size of the bulb down, um, that's a pretty good rule of thumb. Do yep. you want to amend that soil? Say it's in a bed. Do you want to put a little bit of yeah. compost in there? Yeah, a bulb is actually this perfect little... Um, thing it has all the nutrients it needs mm. every little piece of it um, will put up a flower but you can um, amend the soil to help it out so you could just pop it in the ground <clears throat> and you would get bloom because everything it needs in, is in there but if you added some bulb food um, at the bottom of the hole so when you dig the hole then you just put a little scratch in there scratch it in as the roots of the bulb establish themselves all winter they're going to be able to grab those nutrients right underneath it um, to put on an even better show. Okay. And then I'm always a, a proponent of compost. So um, the more compost we add to our garden beds, the better our nutrient sources, the better the organic material. It's just like there's no downside to adding compost whenever you're planting. Uh, and yeah. So when we're looking at, at bulbs, you know, we're kind of going into you know, our fall and winter months. We're you know, here in the Northwest, we don't have a lot of sun I don't know what you're talking Light, about. You know, it tends, it tends to be a little on the ground. What are you talking about? <laughs> do, do bulbs react and do we need to you know, oh, worry right. about where we're placing these certain bulbs in our yard uh -huh. for sun requirements? Um, I don't think so. So bulbs can do full sun to kind of shade. The, the loveliness is that like when they are getting their first sun, the deciduous trees in the area haven't gotten their leaves on. So you can put them under trees and stuff that are deciduous because they'll get sun in the period that they need it, right. and then they'll be shaded out later in the season, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, definitely. So you really can put them in such a wide variety of spots. You don't have to worry about them being in that perfect spot. Um, it's a pretty classic thing to put them under trees. They do sometimes have to compete for nutrients in those right. spots. So that's another, I guess that's another reason why a fertilizer would be a great that's addition, right. especially in those spots where they're really close to other plants or root systems. Um, but yeah, I think you can kind of, I, well, I say put them everywhere. Well, you have a creative way to do it. Tell us about what you do at your house. Well, I am putting crocus in my lawn. <laughs> so uh, I, I have just one patch of lawn in my backyard and I wanted a little like pop of color. And so the past couple of years, I've just been adding these little snow crocus. It's just like a, a just a, like a wide variety of color. I use a little bulb planter. I pop up a little piece of lawn stick it in and put it back down uh -huh. like nothing right. happens <laughs> and then um, in the spring all the flowers start to bloom and then by the time my grass is ready for its first cut the flowers have passed they've gotten enough green enough like nutrition from the sun that i can just cut them down like nothing ever happened cool. i will say i have a very pacific northwest lawn and that it's not pristine yeah. nothing's <laughs> perfect so this goes it's along with right, the right. steps. It's a natural looking. Yes. yes. No, if you great. wanted a pristine like you golfing that. green, that this <laughs> not, is not, not the project for you. But you could put them in kind of anywhere in like little patches that are unexpected. And I do feel like, you know, planting bulbs is the ultimate in this like idea of like looking forward and like yes. optim optimism for the spring. Definitely. So why not throw a few in? Mm -hmm. And then just be surprised, because I'm always surprised. I never remember. Oh, no, where you I don't put remember, them. Right, right. No. no. And do you like to do them in a row, or do you do them more natural? You kind of throw them, and wherever they land, you plant them, yeah. or whatever you want to do. That's a great way. I'm definitely throwing them on my lawn to get this kind of natural um, look for the crocuses. I think bulbs are best when they're planted in mass. Um, one tulip here and there is totally fine, but it doesn't give you that wow. Oh. Um, that a mass of like eight of them together blooming at the same time would give. So when I talk to customers here at the nursery, I say, if you have a limited budget and you can't buy a ton of bulbs, buy one bag, but just put them all together in one spot. Mm -hmm. Instead of a few here and there, plant them as a grouping and they'll give you this like show in this one spot. 
then over the years, maybe you could divide them and, and populate your yard, but you're gonna get like so much more satisfaction and, right. and um, showiness <laughs> from a group of eight tulips of the same color versus one. So, you know, being, being a customer coming out here, I mean, you have out here at Portland Nursery, you have hundreds of <laughs> varieties yes. of, of two, of uh, bulbs in mm -hmm. different colors. Yes. Where do I start to pick out what I want. I mean, it'd be great. Oh my you gosh. Have to have don't one, you have, one don't you have a favorite color? <laughs> no? <Yeah. laughs> well, I think that every, I think a lot of customers are attracted to very specific colors um, for their yards. So they just know what they're yeah. going to do. Like I'm a purple gal. So a lot of my bulbs are purple because that's just what I do. <laughs> um, but if you wanted some neutrals, you could get some neutral tulips, like let's say white tulips, and then a few other outliers of let's say a bright color that you liked. That might be a good way to start okay. populating um, your yard with bulbs. And not all bulbs bloom at the same time. So it's not like it's you plant, plant them and they're all coming You're right, out, so. it's true. Even tulips as a group plant um, bloom at separate times. So in most cases, your packages for tulips will say like an early, mid or a late. Um, they'll kind of give you an idea of when they might bloom. This is the great um, thing to think about when you're doing like a, a layered bulb pot, for instance. You can do um, bulbs that will bloom at s different times so that you get the show throughout the season. Okay. So his, like in general, you know, crocuses and snowdrops, these kind of things are very early in the spring. Um, tulips and daffodils come on a little later and go for a longer period um, within the spring. And explain a little bit about this layered, layered um, idea. Yes. So, because that sounds really interesting. Yes, it's very great. I think everybody, if you have room outside anywhere, you should have a cute little layered bulb pot. Doesn't have to be huge. It can be in any pot. I'd say, twelve inches or taller. Um, and we just put bulbs in layers in the pot. Um, a lot of people call it lasagna pot. Oh, yeah. um, so the bulbs that are biggest, remember we said the bigger bulbs need to be deeper in. So let's say you wanted an allium, which is a really big bulb, you'd put that at the bottom. And then, you know, a few inches up, you'd put in some um, potting soil. A few inches up, you would put in your tulips and your daffodils. And then put a few inches of soil in. And then at the top, you would put your crocuses or you could do those little dwarf irises oh, or... Pretty a variety of other things. Put a little more soil on the top and then you can plant annuals at the top as well. Right. So you could put pansies or other things that will thrive throughout the winter. Just to give you a little interest at the top of the pot but, um, until your bulbs start uh, popping. Do, yeah. do you have to worry about you know putting a plant on top of that bulb or no, is, you it, don't. is it gonna this pop is the joy. <laughs> this is the joy of bulbs is they are very, I wanna say smart, but I know that, yeah. Um, <laughs> Resilient. <laughs> they are resilient in that they will they will figure out a way to get up and through. So for bulb pots, you can actually ignore the spacing requirements on the bag too. You can plant them really close together, especially if you're not going to try to regrow them year after year. You're just kind of using them as an annual. You you can plant them close but not touching. That's kind of what we like to say. Um, and then it doesn't matter like where they are on top of each other in the pot because they will just. Um, they will find their way up and through. Oh. It's yeah. pretty fun. Um, I did one all in black flowers last year. Oh, that was pretty. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. That's neat. So, yeah, and like you're saying earlier, it's that hidden surprise where it you is. still have the color yeah. up off all of them. And yeah. Then spring starts to emerge. Ooh. You just start yeah. seeing these pop up. Like, oh yeah, I kind of forgot about that. And several times, even me, you know, I work at a garden center. Even several times last year, I was like, oh, I think that's all of the bulbs in the bulb pot, and then something else would pop up, and I'd be like, like oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> that tulip was in there as well, so oh, that's great. Um, it is the the fun of bulbs, yeah. Okay, so you know, so now we can, we we kind of determined, you know, say you picked an area of your yard that you kind of want want yep. some color, and I want some tulips in this area for early yeah. spring, and you come in here and you picked out the colors that you like and mm -hmm. kind of planned it out. And you talked about you know preparing your hole yes. in there with some soils, but mm -hmm. what about the actual? planting you know we have a yeah. couple of tools up here that are yeah there's a wide variety of tools you can use i mean you could use a traditional um spade this has is nice because it has the um inches so you have a planting depth on your package you dig down you can kind of use this as a ruler to make sure you're deep enough um this is a this is a pretty traditional bulb planter um it will just dig a circle hole so you're not making a huge mess when you're doing it and then if you really want to get fancy or you know, you power, yeah, yeah, power, power tool-ish, kind of <laughs> or you're planning on planting 200 
tulips. <laughs> um, we have these auger planters as well, which I really want to try because that looks really fun and easy. And if, you know, the name of the game is fun and easy, right? Oh, yeah. Gardening. So, um, like, think of all the things we could plant with this. You know, oh, you can. Amazing, right? you yes. All your annuals. You yes, know? you could just keep And all you do is attach everything. it to your drill, and you just kind of yes, go crazy. Oh, that's right. You just, yes, gotta, just remember where <laughs> your yes. sprinklers you are. Need oh, drill. <laughs> <laughs> you need a drill for this fine yes. thing. So, yeah, you attach it to your drill, and you go around. It really would. If you were doing a huge swath of tulips, let's say, oh, this would be so much invaluable easier. because yeah. that would be, you know, let's say 200 holes. That would be a lot. But this would help a lot. So. This is what they do at Kuchenhof in Holland, I think. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes, every botanical garden right. is doing a seasonal display. Right. I hope they have one of those right. augers. Right. Yes. So, we, so we got the bulbs. Okay. We yes. have it planted. Oh. We got, mm -hmm. we've, you know, put our, put our food, food in there. Yeah. You know, picked out all our flowers. But, you know, the flower bulbs are not the only thing that you should be planting this time of year. Yes. There's some other bulbs. That we said are spring time blooming year. bulbs, but it's also time to get garlic, shallots, and onions yes. in the ground as well. Um, so here at Portland Nursery, we, we have quite a few varieties of garlic, both soft neck and hard neck, um, in stock right now, and uh, and onion sets as well. So uh, garlic is a wonderful thing to plant right now. It's super easy in the Pacific Northwest. Garlic growing is so simple, no nonsense. You put it in the ground. It pops up a little bit over the winter, but then it just kind of sits there. You don't have to do anything. And then by June, you've got um, meals for days. So yeah. um, just a reminder that when you're planting garlic, um, like you would do when you're cooking, you break open um, the head of garlic and you plant individual cloves yeah. with the point up and the roots down. Uh, and you yep. get each bulb will make a whole garlic yeah. head. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, so for this, this probably has seven, eight cloves in it. So. That's a pretty good number of plants yeah. that you'll have. Yeah, it's a long crop, so you gotta like put it in the ground for quite a while, right? It's gonna take till the middle of summer to mature. Right. So just keep that in mind, but it doesn't take up much space. So right. sometimes I stick them around in my perennial beds even and just let them go. Cause oh, I know idea. they're not gonna like, you know, take up much space. They look fine. They give you just a little vertical greenery. Right. And then you can harvest when they yeah. start going. And there's brown. lots of different varieties you sell oh, here. Oh yeah, I mean, it's like a ton. Amazing. Organic, non-organic, um, soft neck varieties are the kind traditionally used for braiding, mm. um, and then hard necks are the kind that we usually grow when we want to have garlic scapes. So in the in the spring, they shoot off this little thing, and if um, if it's in your flavor profile, you can harvest them and saute them up. So you get a kind of a second crop out of your garlic if you grow hard neck. Oh, yep. mm -hmm. yeah, those are tasty and they're really expensive at the grocery store. Exactly, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And, and honestly, um, buying seed garlic at your garden center is the best idea. If you are, if you have the instinct to buy garlic at your grocery store, be warned. A lot of grocery store garlic is sprayed um, with chemicals to keep it from um, sprouting. So if you haven't had success with that, it might be, be because um, it had some chemicals that literally stopped it from growing for you. Uh, so seed garlic is guaranteed not to do that. Um, and it comes from reliable growers. So yeah. Kind of like a seed potato in the, in yeah, the spring, definitely. right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Same Another idea. Another great idea to do next year. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I had one more question. So okay. a lot of people live like out in the woods and they have a lot of deer or rabbits mm -hmm. or other critters. And so is there a better bulb to grow if you, in case you have, you know, wildlife? Yes, I think, um, it's hard because bulbs are very attractive to a lot of different critters. So when I'm talking to customers, a lot of times they'll have problems with squirrels and rabbits mm. here in the city. Um, and for that, I do suggest, even if it's, um, you haven't had problems, you can put a little piece of chicken wire over areas that you've planted bulbs, cover it with a little mulch, won't even, won't even be visible, and then the critters can't get to it. Um, I do think deer and stuff like tulips pretty well, so that might be a hard one. But um, allium are in the onion family. I think maybe they're a little less uh, uh, ideal flavor, <laughs> flavor wise uh, for deer. And I think daffodils do pretty well, although I could be wrong. Yeah, we don't have a ton of deer here no. in Portland, so I don't answer those questions all the time. But man, do I, I uh, answer squirrel questions. Oh, sure. And they, I think they just like to play with them. <laughs> <laughs> all your heart. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> one little bite and they're like, I don't like it. Yeah. Um, oh. And so I do say like some physical protection, Great. especially if you've done this beautiful layered bulb pot and you oh. don't, and you're not going to have to dig around in it. Why not put just a little round piece of chicken wire in the top um, just to keep all the bulbs safe, keep the little critters out. And then the, um, as we said, the bulbs can find their way out of anything, right. so they can right. find their way through And we have a lot other. of like mole and voles, and you yes. know, you'll get people that say, yeah. you know, the moles ate my bulbs, they didn't come up. Yeah. Do they eat them? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. No. I yeah. want you to, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think gophers. Gophers. Gophers, might, gophers. But they don't like the daffodils, because I think, or no, hyacinths oh, or daffodils, because I think they're poisonous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. They, well, yeah. Tune in. You have to get those answers. <laughs> what is the difference right. between a mole and a vole? Mm. Mm. <laughs> deep, deep questions. <laughs> this has been amazing. Right. And, amazing so, so as we're going, going through, you know, we mm -hmm. come, come springtime, you know, we've, mm -hmm. all of our bulbs have come yep. up. We've enjoyed them. Yep. What do we do next? Yeah, so you're going to have all these beautiful blooms. Um, if you have the bulbs in your yard and you want them to come back every year, um, the idea is you deadhead them. So you take off the top. This is especially good for tulips. You pop off the top once the bloom is done so that it doesn't produce seeds. Because yeah. you don't want the energy of the bulb to go towards seed production. You want yeah. it to keep it down in there for next year. Um, and then you need to keep the greens up until they die back naturally. I think historically, especially with daffodils, people like to tie them up in little bundles yeah. and do this kind of thing. Yeah. It stops the bulb from able, being able to do photosynthesis and, and, and capture more carbohydrates to go back into the right. bulb. So um, we got to leave them up until they start dying back naturally if you want to grow them for year after year. Right. If you just want to grow, grow a tulip as an annual, you can pull the whole thing up and then you never have to think about it again. Right. So that could be a consideration. Mm -hmm. um, and this is maybe why like planting like daffodils and tulips like back a little bit in your border, you know, like a foot back in your border. Mm -hmm. You could grow them, let them bloom, keep the greens up and then plant some annuals in the front to kind of hide it. That might be a good solution. Because no, really right, you're going to have a few weeks in there yeah. before that foliage. You foliage definitely kind of, are. Kind of yeah. And it's worth it, I think, to get these kind of big clumps going, especially if daffodil. Daffodils yeah. are such a glorious That's perennial so pretty, plant yeah. that right. we can have. Yeah, there's so. no, nothing more stunning in the spring than this big patch it's of so blue. It's so cheery. It is on a gray day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. So, yes. do you need to, you know, lift and dig the bulbs if you want to store them and replant them the next year, or are they okay being? If and you the have them in the ground here in the Pacific Northwest, you can just leave them in the ground. Um, I think the biggest problem people have is they forget that where they are yeah, right. um, and they're digging around. If you happen to dig some up on accident, you can either put them back in or store them until fall um, in a cool, dark place. Um, but you don't have to dig them up over winter. They need the cold in order to bloom the next spring. So yeah. just keep that in mind. We're lucky here. Um, to have this kind of temperate climate that is ideal for cold stratification and right. stuff. So. You know, and you talked earlier about, you know, your lasagna bulb yes. layering in your in your container, and you had a kind of a good trick of mm -hmm. inserting a, a pot inside the pot. Yeah, so I went to my local independent garden store that I work at, and I got <laughs> a black plastic nursery pot, and I fit it into, I picked the one that fit into a decorative pot that I wanted kind of in the front of my yard. Um, I do my uh, layered bulb pot in that every year. And then once it's done blooming, I pull it out of there, um, hide it behind my garage. And then I put a new, you know, like spring annuals um, decorative pot in there as well. So I can switch out the insert basically. Right. Um, have my seasonal bloom all year long. I mean, I literally just did a fall one in it as well. Nice. And then you can just keep going. And then just swap them out. Right. Then you're not trying to unplant everything and you're replant right. it yeah. every time. And, and if you bulb. get these pots that fit within a decorative one that you want, you're not lifting a heavy ceramic pot all the time. You're not having to switch out a really expensive pot. You just have a couple cheap nursery pots that you can use for a variety of seasons in your yard. And then they're closer up on your deck or your front porch. They're not in the back 40 and yes. you can enjoy them, you know, yes. before the gardening season begins sometimes. Yeah, they can just be like right there. You can keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just makes the, I like, it's, you know, gardening is this wonderful thing. You're very connected to the season. So having these like seasonal pots mm -hmm. that are at their prime when they're on display in your yard is kind of like the glory of. It is nice. Yeah, it is yeah. really nice. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, if we have the bulbs, we're planting them outside and the pots and in the ground. But then you also see bulbs that are indoors. Yes. And those are, are forced along as we come along yeah. for the holidays. So it's a, a fun little trick to get a little bit of spring bulb action in the middle of winter is to force, 
uh, force bulbs. Traditionally, paper whites are the classic one. Um, people also do amaryllis. Um, so you can take uh, paper white bulbs, which are a type of daffodil, really, and you put them in either water or soil, and you bring them in the house, um, and they will grow. They're, you're kind of tricking them into thinking it's spring, oh, look, honestly. I'm warm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look at this tropical okay. situation yeah. I'm in. Um, and so we have a lot of paper white bulbs this time of year because people do like to do it. Um, they bring like a, a huge scent into your house and a little bloom in a time that's pretty dark. So. Uh, yeah, just you, all you need is a bulb and honestly a little water. container of water. Yeah. It's a really right, simple, there. easy, fun way. It's actually really good for kids too. I was going to say, that's so much fun because now they mm -hmm. maybe a project, they can't go outside. Yes. And so here's an indoor project, a science project that they could see. Yeah, okay. it's kind of like that idea of like growing beans in science yeah. class, right? <laughs> You're just growing a flower over winter when they're kind of trapped inside more. Um, so yeah, we have all those supplies here. We'll have amaryllis uh, for the winter too. That's a very classic uh, holiday time bloom as well. And then I think people also do hyacinths as well. Yeah. So yeah, and those need a little chill, little chill time, I think. Yeah, for the paper whites and the amaryllis, they're already good to go. But yeah. I, yeah, I do think the hyacinth need a time, a little time in the fridge. Maybe. Yeah, before. I remember having a bag in my fridge. And yes. I was, <laughs> Don't eat. You know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> These are not eating bulbs. These no, are no. just <laughs> beautifying bulbs. Right. right. Yes. <laughs> So while well, you give me inspiration as Very all my, all yeah. my summer, I'm summer, summer bulb yeah. things are starting to die down to get back in yeah, there, get, get some bulbs in the ground and wait for that kind of that early spring mm -hmm. inspiration. Yeah, so. get them in now. It's time. Yeah. You're going to be happy. <laughs> you're going to forget you've done it. And then you're going to be surprised and happy with your past self. <laughs> so, well, it's been a pleasure to be out here. Thank, thank you for you the so education much. on the bulbs. Yeah, we thank, thank Portland Nursery for having us today and Capital Subaru for sponsoring our podcast. And we'll see you next time in the garden. Here at Capital Subaru, we are family. From you, our customers, our coworkers, and even our actual family members work here. This is my son, Casey. We're generations ahead of the competition, and we're always working to keep you and your family moving. We're here for you. We make it easy to join our Capital Subaru family. All the support you need, from sales and financing to service and parts. We'll be here for you for generations to come. And generations after that. I'm Blake. And I'm Casey. We make it easy to join our Capital Subaru family. Where it's your, your way, way on, on the parkway. parkway. For 75 years, Al's Garden and Home has been a favorite destination of local gardeners. Starting in a small roadside fruit stand off of 99E in Woodburn by Al Biggie, Al's has grown to four retail locations in the Portland metro area that also includes a huge growing operation near Hubbard. To ensure that you get the highest quality, Al's grows over 80% of the plants they sell. This fourth generation family owned business is now one of the most recognized garden centers in the country. Stop by one of our four locations to learn why Owls is the first stop for Northwest Gardeners.